family, are you ready for week two of our Rethink series? I hope that you are. If you are, do me a favor. Go ahead and type, I am ready. I am ready. Go ahead and type that in the text box. And when you type that, I want you to also hit that share button. Go ahead and hit that share button. Get some more people in here. Get some more people into the church. This is your way of digital marketing. I want you to hit that share button. Like, comment, tag somebody. Send it to a friend because God is going to truly bless us today. I believe that God is going to open our eyes to see something in a different perspective. Some things that you didn't hear the first time, you will hear the second time. Revelation that you didn't catch the first time, you'll get it the second time. So thank you so much for tuning in and God's going to bless us today. Listen, make sure that you're bringing in your non-perishable items because we're going to reach over 200 families this month. Woo! That's big. That's major. And that's the job of the church. And we're going to make sure that we carry out the love of Jesus Christ to the community. We're not we're not stuck between four four walls anymore. We're we're out here and we're doing the work. We are uh, not even coming into the sanctuary. So what are we doing as the church? We're being the church. We're being the church. So make sure that you're doing everything that you can to be a part of the outreach endeavors that we are doing. It's going to be phenomenal when we are able to touch people's lives just with some food. Oh, man, it's going to be amazing. Thank you so much again for tuning in. God's going to bless us. Listen, I know some of you tune in on Sunday, but you're not really here on Tuesday. So I want you to make sure that you're tuning in to our Thrive Revival. God is going to bless us and he has been blessing us. So make sure that you tune in. All right. God bless. God is gonna do something, something incredible, something substantial, just for you. God is gonna do something phenomenal, something incredible, something substantial. Father God, first of all, I want to say thank you for giving me an opportunity to see another day, a day that i never seen before. The Bible teaches us that we should rejoice for God. This is the day that the Lord has made. And today, God, I rejoice for seeing a day that i never seen before. And Father, I thank you that my eye was able to behold the glorious works and wonders of your hands. Father, I give you praise and glory for that. God, I'm reminded of the children of Israel. And the Bible says after a hot battle, they got in the midst of the camp where the Ark of the Covenant was. The Bible said they gave a praise, a shout that brought fear to the enemy. God, I sense your spirit and because I sense your spirit, I want to get a shout of hallelujah. I want to get a shout of glory to God. I want to give a shout of thank you, Jesus. God, I just want to praise you because you're worthy of all the praise. And even though the world said these are dark times, God, I see the brightness of your glory. I'm not concerned about what's going on on the outside because I know you're in the midst of with I sense your spirit. And because I sense your spirit, God, I don't have no worries or frustrations. I don't have no concerns, God, because I know that you have got it all in control. Blessed, God, as the man, the woman of God, whoever's going to come to bring forth the word. Bless them with anointing, God, that will destroy yokes. Bless them with anointing, God, that will build and set, bond and set people free in the name of of Jesus. God, I ask you to bless those that's going to hear the word, that they will be encouraged and strengthened, that their hope and their faith will be built up in the name of Jesus, God. Even through social media, God, I pray that the anointing, that your spirit will go in such a way that lives will be changed. I thank you and give you all the praise because you truly are worthy of the praise, God. Have your way, even through social media, Father. God, let souls be saved. Let healings take place. Let bondage be broken in the name of Jesus. Let joy rise and let the enemy be scattered. I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hello, Deep Family. Join me in saying our mission statement. Our mission is to impact our city with effective life-changing ministries to make and to nurture humanity into disciples of Christ. 
to usher humanity into economical and spiritual empowerment, to embrace and meet the holistic needs of all humanity. And we accomplish this through our vision to teach, reach, love, and serve. Hello, DLCM family and friends. This is Sister Renee Barrett, the Outreach Coordinator. On behalf of Apostle Simmons and First Lady Gwen Simmons and Senior Pastor Aaron McNair and Lady Ashley McNair, I just want to gently remind you and encourage you to not forget about our upcoming event in November. Yes, the Thanksgiving giveaway. It will be held November the 21st at 12 noon until it runs out. And you may be asking, well, how can we help or support this endeavor? I'm glad you asked. We are asking for items such as macaroni and cheese, yams, green beans, cranberry sauce, gravy, potatoes with mashed potato flakes, corn, and even stuffing, and also rice. You know, those items that make for a great Thanksgiving meal. We're asking that you drop those items off here at the DLCM admin office Monday through Wednesday from 10 to 5. The last date to be collecting these items will be Wednesday, November the 18th at 5 p.m. So come on, DLCM family and friends, as you have done before, let's do this again. Let's get those items in here so that we can continue to impact our community for good as we continue to exercise our motto of teach, reach, love, serve. Thank you. I wake up this morning with a praise on my mind to give him all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise. Why? Because he deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. It's okay to clap. It's okay to give him a shout. We come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. You say. To lift our hands.
shout hallelujah right where you are. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same sun, the name of our Lord is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. God has blessed you thus far as we are at this stay at home order and we're waiting for God to release this thing and, and change things and turn things around for us. But while we're here, while we are here at home church, I want to make sure that you receive a word from the Lord that will help us to grow as a church. And so tonight um, I read a book, me and my wife read a book um, some time ago entitled uh, The Five Love Languages five love languages it's a very good book um, to teach us how to even uh, grow as a couple and communicate better with each other we did the five love languages um, and so tonight I want to do something I want to talk about the five love languages of the church the five love languages of the church I, I, I pray that you'll listen closely tonight if you would do me a favor share this share this because you sharing this may change someone's life so share this information with someone if you would the five love languages of the church i believe that uh, first of all when you fully comprehend the weight of vision the importance of the assignment of the church and how important your alignment with that assignment is it will bring you to a place of maturity whereas you embrace the necessary changes that you have to uh, bring to your personal life to help you be more effective or more effective instrument in the kingdom. Um, our problem is we want God to elevate us, reward us, and bless us on our own terms. Uh, we want to abuse grace by attempting to make God accept our flaws and failures, but overlook them and overlook them and still give us what we don't deserve. Uh, I'm a firm believer that if we ask God for something, we need to make sure we are currently in a position to handle what we're asking for. Uh, if we ask God to give us city influence, then we need to be operating as if we can effectively impact the city now. Uh, if we ask God to fill the altar with souls, we can't do that if we are too busy to evangelize. We can't believe that God is going to continue to bring miracles to our house if we are bringing uh, drama and disrespect to his house. So we cannot look for God to bless us on our own terms. We cannot look for him to bless us on our own terms. Here's the thing you have to understand. Effective evangelism... <clears throat> Holistic living, community outreach, uh, family orientation, children and youth impact, excellence and love, focus worship. These are things that we want to partake in our ministry. It is what we want to focus on. It is our target. It is our main objectives as the church. Uh, but we cannot lose focus cannot lose focus. Whenever we venture off into anything that is absent of our purpose, we then as a church turn our back on God. Hear me. He has called us to this. And Jesus says in Luke 9, 62, no one puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Check the text. Luke is saying, if you're going to sign up for kingdom work, then you got to leave old things alone and move forward to focus on kingdom work, which means the attitudes, the emotions, the struggles, the problems that we've had before you attach to kingdom work. You have to change in order to move forward. All right. Just type that in. Just type kingdom work, kingdom work, kingdom work, kingdom work. So so we, we don't have time to be getting off focus. That's why our apostle set it in motion that our theme for the year is to get focused and stay focused. We don't have time to lose focus. We don't have time to lose our passion for ministry. We have work to do have to work to do at the beginning of the month of March I, I came and I talked to you uh, about um, 
about persecution of the church. And I talked to you uh, uh, from the subject, let's get in trouble. I hope y'all uh, still have your notes from that. Let's get in trouble. We talked about how persecution will be attached to the ministry that is doing something, that is working, that is trying to complete the assignment that it has been given. We've discussed how the more good we do as a body, the more persecution and trouble is thrown towards us. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. Because while we are being in one stance to block the harm coming to us from the outside, we have been attacked with distractions from the inside. Mm. Ezra, Ezra 4 and 5 says that when, that when the real enemies heard that the people of God were building, they came in and tried to connect with them. And from the inside, they tried to frustrate their purpose. Uh, you have to make sure that while you are blocking, while we are blocking our ministry from the outside attack, that the enemy doesn't creep in and dwell among us and start destroying us from within. In. You see, the devil will not always try to destroy uh, the church from outward persecution. But if he can come in, if he can slip in and throw on a deep t-shirt, then he will try to destroy us from within. All right. Now, whenever you do something, say something or plot something to harm each other or to harm leadership or to harm the integrity of the church, you aren't doing anything but harming yourself. We are one. Could you type that in for me? We are one. We are one. Please type that in for me. We are one. Uh, the enemy knows if he breaks us up. Souls won't be saved. People won't be healed. Lives won't be changed. People won't uh, have an impact on their life. It won't be a place of refreshing for them. The church won't be a place of freedom uh, to worship for them and their family. But you have to understand we are one. We are one. Never be surprised at the enemy's attack, although you may be surprised at who he uses. And some of us have to do self-evaluation because whenever a word like this goes forth, we love to try to think of that person that it may be for. But sometimes you just have to lay your hands on yourself and say, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. The enemy has to use somebody. But the truth of the matter is it doesn't have to be you. You determine whether or not the enemy uses you or not. So, so there has to be some languages that we use at DLCM that allows us to communicate to and with heaven, hell, and each other. All right. Now, our language sends message to heaven that says we are serious about our kingdom work and kingdom thinking. Our language sends a message to hell that says we are serious about our kingdom work and kingdom thinking and your plans won't work here. Our message sends a, a, a me our language sends a message to each other that says I'm serious about kingdom work and kingdom thinking and I need you to survive. So now understand this, a language is a system of communication used by a particular community or country. Right. Any system of formalized symbols, signs, sounds, gestures or the like used or conceived as a means to communicate thought, emotion, etc. So all of the languages that we need to adopt must be displayed as labeled and displayed as love languages because all of our kingdom doing and involvement is hinged upon the authenticity of our love for God, each other, and our church. So my language expresses my authentic love for my God, my sisters and brothers, and my church. I hope y'all are with me here. So the first language, the first language of love, the first love language is the culture of encouragement. Culture of encouragement. Now, encouragement is the action of giving someone support, confidence, and hope. From, from, from everyday conversations between romantic partners to pep talks given uh, by a basketball coach to dis discussions in our online community forums. Encouragement is ubiquitous to everyday social life. Encouragement is one of the most common ways through which individuals express support for one another. In Thessalonians 5 and 11, 
the Apostle Paul says, encourage one another and build each other up. I think one of the problems in the church today is that we haven't distinguished the difference between encourage and discourage. Some of us discourage others and don't know that we are. Hmm. Whenever someone comes to you with a problem or an issue and you enable them by agreeing, agreeing with what you know is contrary to the lifestyle or the attitude that they should be operating in, you are discouraging them and not encouraging them. Encouragement means I'm pushing you to a place called better. Your words, your hug, your smile, your concern, your love shown to someone today could be the push that they need for the next stage of life. All right. When people come through those doors of your church, they have to you have to stop always jumping to conclusions as to why you think they may have a nasty attitude or why you may think they may have look like they have a bad day because they may have a legit reason why they have an attitude or why they're going through. But your encouragement could be the thing that releases the stress off of their life and it and eases their mind. Paul says in Ephesians 4 29 he says let no corrupt communication let no corrupt language proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying encouraging that which may minister grace unto his hearers sometimes we need to counter negativity with encouragement Mm. You got to watch out for the shade that you throw. You got to watch out for the downplay, the jokes and the comments to others. Although we may be playing, we sometimes for the push down people down instead of building them up. The church is full of workers sometimes feel unappreciated, overlooked and left out. But your encouragement can help lift the heaviness of their assignment. Watch what Proverbs 12 and 25 says. It says, heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. Someone could uh, be on the brink of spiritual, mental, and emotional depression, but your encouragement can revive them. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just type that. Lift me up. Just just type lift me up. Lift me up. Proverbs 18 and 21 says that the tongue has the power of life and death. That's just not for you, but it's for the things you say out of your mouth to others can bring to their life, life or death. Ah, uh, yeah. So, so the question is, you can ask someone, are you trying to kill me? Oh, by what you speak out of your mouth to me, or, or what are you trying to do? Mm. With all that people deal with, all the hell that we may be going through from that week, all that we may be struggling through, all that we had to face when we finally get to the house of God, when we finally get amongst the saints, we don't need negativity. We don't need to walk into schemes and tricks. We don't need to walk into an atmosphere filled with drama, hate and problems. When we come in here, we're trying to get away from all of that. We, we, when we come into the house of God, God, we are trying to get to a place of strength where we can be encouraged by our fellow brothers and sisters. Now, I can honestly uh, without say without encouragement, uh, people will be discouraged away from the body of Christ. They will be discouraged even away from the church. So you have to make sure that you employ encouragement to your brothers and sisters. I I say all the time that you need to encourage that person uh, that's a musician in your church. You need to, and I know you pay them, but you need to encourage them. You need to speak life into them. That person who may be an administrator, a singer, a sound man, you know, a deacon, an armor bearer. Sometimes just your encouragement will not allow them to burn out. Sometimes your encouragement will give them the push they need. Sometimes your encouragement will push them to the next level. They just need to hear the encouragement from their fellow brothers and sisters. Watch this. There has to always be an atmosphere created by your words and your actions that all depressed, mentally deranged, psychologically dis. dis- discombobulated, abused, hurt, wounded, unappreciated people. All they have to do is walk in your presence and the culture of encouragement that we have created within the house of God will change their whole perspective on life. 
So the culture of encouragement. Culture of encouragement is the first language. It's the first love language. It proves to our church, to our God, and to hell that we love our church. So, so first one, culture of encouragement. The second love language, second love language is acts of service. Acts of service. Acts of service is a language that speaks authentically to God. One thing we must remember is that serving God and serving in the kingdom of God is a privilege. <clears throat> it's a privilege. Our, our arrogance comes when we, uh, the church, um, the church of God, uh, un don't understand the privilege of serving God. We got to understand the privilege of serving him. Uh, the privilege of serving God sometimes becomes diluted by the demand that serving God has on our life. So many of us look at serving God as an inconvenience when it seems like sometimes serving him is more of a benefit to him than it is a blessing to us. And so we begin to become uncommitted, disloyal, and unfaithful, and we get mad and upset, and it's so easy for us to quit. It's so easy for us to leave. It's so easy for us to stop serving because we actually look at serving God as a burden on our life when in actuality the reason the only reason serving God and our church can be a burden on our life is because somewhere in our life our priorities are wrong Mm. C.T. Studd says this, if Christ be God and die for me, no sacrifice can be too great for me to make. That is a lot of our problem. Everything that we do for God and the church, uh, look for, we look for an immediate reward because our mindset is that we had to sacrifice to do it. Mm. You got you to gotta be careful when everything that you do for the kingdom of God is a sacrifice. We got to change our perspective perspective on serving God how can we have so much pleasure in doing uh, him doing for us how can he have so much pleasure in doing for us but everything we do for him is considered a sacrifice our priorities are off our motives for ministry may be off God has no need for convenient Christians mm. I hope you got that. God has no need for convenient Christians. We are only Christians when we feel like being. We only serve when it's convenient for us. And then we label that service as sacrifice. But David Livingston says this. He quoted, and I, and I quote, if commissioned by an earthly king is considered an honor, how can commissioned by a heavenly king be considered a sacrifice? We have to graduate to the place that everything that we do for God is not a sacrifice. When you understand the privilege of serving God, then your love language through acts of service says to God, thank you for the gift. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the opportunity because truth is I don't deserve to work for you. And with all the sin that is in my life, uh, I, 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 I don't even deserve your grace and mercy. Uh, and so I get to serve you lord have mercy that changes your perspective from i have to do it i got to do it. no 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 i get to serve you have to stop walking around with the do i have to attitude and change your perspective from serving god to i get to serve i get to serve i get to serve all right now let's move on to the next the next language the next love language i don't want to stay there too long i got more but i don't want to stay there too long the next language the third language is kingdom giving kingdom giving even in a time like this in a pandemic this is a hard topic to to discuss because globally uh giving in the church um has been a touchy subject always a touchy subject because people are quick to label the church and the leader as greedy as selfish as money hungry uh, but we understand at our church, we have made it clear that the goal uh, is to do ministry outside the four walls. It would take your kingdom giving to bring to pass and keep in place, keep our service in a place of consistency. Everything that we want to do outside the four walls, everything that we want to do within the church, it would take kingdom giving to make it happen. Mm. Old Testament principles uh, give us some light on this. And number one, you have to understand that everything belongs to God. 
Everything belongs to God. Your, your, your Lord is greatness, is the greatness and the power, the glory, the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Everything comes from you and we have given you only what comes from your hand. First Chronicles 29, 11 and 14. So we are stewards over what God has put in our hands. He is the owner, but we are the managers. We are stewards over what he has put in our hand rather than feeling aggra aggravated at what God might ask us to give we should feel thrilled at how much he allows us to keep for our own use mm. so the first thing you have to understand is that everything belongs to God the second thing is that giving as a thank offering to God Giving as a thank offering to God because I'm appreciative of what God has done for me and I'm appreciative of who God is to me, then I am thankful to him and so I give unto the kingdom. Number three, giving of 10% to God is normal. It is the tithe. It is the tithe. Leviticus 27 and 30, uh, this was a generous proportion of income and specifically a deliberate giving back of the first and the best part of what God's people have received from him. I tithe because I am a Christian. I'm, I tithe because I believe in the principle of tithing. Number four, keeping back a part of the 10% is actually robbing God. It's actually robbing God. Malachi 3 and 8 here, the prophet umbraids God's people uh, for not bringing in the full tithe into God's house and then encourages them to test God in this and see if he will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour down an overflowing blessing in response to their obedient tithing up uh, so even in this type of pandemic and everything that we are dealing with God is still requiring us to give we can hear the talks from the outside that says that even in this the church shouldn't be asking for money but to keep the church going to keep the church making an impact it's going to require those who believe bible and those who follow the word of god to continue to sow the only reason you shouldn't give a tithe if you don't have an income other than that god has blessed you with it with income and so we bring e all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in the house Hallelujah. So the third love language talks about kingdom giving. Here's the fourth language. The fourth love language. The fourth love language is maturity. 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 Now, the level of maturity that God needs us, um, the level of maturity he needs us to be on is where individuals and the church we have to be on a level where we are able to stop letting everything throw us off track. Mm. To be mature means you are impervious, which means nothing is able to penetrate you or do you harm. It means your emotions don't control you. You don't wear your feelings on your shoulder. You are not looking for an opportunity to cry church hurt. And say you've been done wrong. Mature means having or showing the mental and emotional qualities of an adult. Which means the pastor doesn't have to, to continually teach you the same thing over and over as a parent does a child. Because once you hear it, it falls on mature ears and you're able to grab it and grow. Mm. Grab it and grow. I hope y'all take that with you. Grab it and go. Here is another definition that I thought was interesting. Mature means to become due for payment. Hmm. Which means so many of us are living beneath our means, beneath what we've been praying for because, and because of our failure to mature. And God is saying, if you can just reach the place of maturity, the place where I want you to be, you'll be in a place where you are due payment for what you need. Hallelujah. I thank God for that. Mature means to reach full development. That means you are you have committed the necessary process, committed to the necessary process in order to be on the level you need to be on. It's not enough for God to just give you what you want if you're not mature enough to handle it. So there has to be there has to be a desire for maturity. Your level of maturity will determine your level of love for God. 
your church and each other. Our problem is we will not dismiss pride and admit our level of maturity. Watch what Ephesians says. He says, he have gave gifts of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher uh, to train Christ's followers in skills, servant work, working with Christ's body, the church, until we are all moving rhythmatically uh, and easily with each other, efficient and graceful in response to God's son, fully mature adults, fully developed and with out fully alive like Christ not belong infancies among us please we will will not tolerate babes in the womb small children who are easy marked for imposters this is from the message translation God wants us to grow up God wants us to grow up Lord have mercy uh, just just go ahead and type that I have to grow up go ahead and type that I have to grow up uh, yeah don't don't mess up the course to your destiny you have to mature it makes me upset when I hear people report uh, that someone hit confrontation in the church and now you want to leave the church you, you you have to mature to the place that nothing can pull you away from your place of destiny it, it's only an option that you leave the place where God led you to that you leave the place where God told you to connect it's only easy to leave that place when you're not mature enough to stand through storms and frustration and discomfort because you are not mature you have not matured to the place where God's vision and your destiny is bigger than your pride Lord have mercy your pride, your emotions, and your feelings, God's destiny for you and your God's vision for you has to be bigger than your pride Mm, Lord have mercy nothing nothing can pull me away from the place where God has told me to connect if God called you to deeper life church ministries then you have to work through frustration stop crumbling under pressure Lord have mercy I'm your pastor and I'm teaching you how to grow I'm teaching you how to handle frustration but if you're going to apply what God has given you then you cannot allow the enemy to sift life out of you you cannot allow the enemy to sift you away from your place of growth. Hallelujah. All right, let's come in down to the last, the last love language, the last love language. The fifth love language is unity. Unity, unity. That there has to be, there has to be unity, and there has to be chemistry in the church. Has to be unity, has to be chemistry in the church. Unity means the quality or state of not being multiple hmm. means harmony oneness unity is sincerely a necessity in our lives and in the church you have to understand deeper life that we cripple the arm of the enemy when we come together hmm we don't we don't have time for division some of our division is not the devil's fault some of us need to admit where we are and tap into the love language of maturity so that we can unify. The Bible says in Acts 16, I love this story, Acts 16, Paul and Silas, the Bible says uh, that they uh, beat them and threw them in prison. Hmm. The question is, how, how, how in the world... How in the world does Paul and Silas, they get beat and thrown in prison? And, and my question is, uh, are you going to uh, be one of those who can go through hell with other people for the kingdom's sake? Mm. Paul and Silas, I love this. I love this. They together unified, together unified were in prison. And the Bible says that they had them chained up. But now listen uh, to why they were chained up. They were chained up for preaching Jesus. Mm. You got to have somebody that don't mind getting in trouble like we talked about last month. You got to have somebody that doesn't mind getting in trouble for the right reason. Somebody that doesn't mind being persecuted for Christ's sake. You have to have somebody that does not mind defending the church, defending the leaders, defending the God for the sake of the kingdom. Paul and Silas together were chained up because they preached Jesus. The text doesn't say what time Paul and Silas together went to jail, but it says around midnight, Paul and Silas 
together began to pray and sing praises. And because they didn't just pray asking God to help them, but the two of them pulled together in unity and began praising God, uh, the Bible says that the two touch it and agree and, uh, in my name I'll be in the midst. And the Bible says they pulled together. Uh, and the Bible says around midnight, around midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. And here's the revelation because you must understand when you connect with the right people, great Great things will happen. When you hook up with great people, miracles will take place. When you hook up with the right people, destiny can be released. Blessings will speed up to you. Doors will open for you. So the Bible says that the two of them connected. The power of their togetherness had them bound for greatness. And then suddenly there was a great earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. Watch this. I need you to catch this. Because of the unity of Paul and Silas, all the prison doors were open. And everyone's chains were released. All because they unified together they unified together and set everybody around them free the community doesn't need us disjointed they don't need us separated they don't need us fighting they need us together because when we come together we can help pick up the broken pieces of their life and put them back together Woo! we have to lock arms as a church because it takes unity if we both love God if if we all love the church if we all love each other if we all live holy if we all strive for perfection if we all do God's will if we all put our differences aside then together we can cause the chains to fall off of people's lives together the sick can be healed together blinded eyes can be opened together the lost can be found together destinies can be obtained together greatness can be accomplished the devil might have a bully he might be a bully but if we unify he can't beat all of us <laughs> Lord have mercy one can chase a thousand but two can pit ten thousand to flight uh, one can encourage the leaders but two can uphold the leaders arms in the heat of battle it's going to take us coming together to bring unity so that our church can strive five five love languages five love languages of the church when we operate in these five things, we're going to prove to God that we love him. We're going to prove to the devil that we're not afraid of him. And we'll prove to the church that we love her. Hallelujah. Five love languages. Take all five of these things. Let's apply them to our life. Let's apply them to our church so that we can operate in excellence and complete the assignment that God has given us. I pray that this word tonight has blessed you. I pray that it's going to push you to a place of action and cause you to operate in a different level of excellence. I pray that this word has touched your life tonight and you're ready to operate within these five love languages of the church let's pray father we thank you we thank you for the opportunity to bring your word to your people thank you for opening our eyes and convicting our hearts and our spirits to help us to get in line with what you have called us to do now god touch our hearts touch us let us serve well let us give well let us speak well in the name of Jesus. Let us work together well in the name of Jesus so we can complete the assignment you have given to DLCM. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, DLCM, you know what time it is. It's time to give. It's time to give unto the kingdom of God. I want you to continue to sow as you have been sowing. Thank you so much for your dedication and your commitment to the church and to ministry. Continue to sow on that level. The information is on the screen that you can sow into the kingdom of God through cash app through our website or you can call our church office thank you so much for sowing your seed tonight father bless these your people who are sowing into the kingdom of God and let our harvest rest upon our life in Jesus name amen God bless you is my prayer
gonna do